the heroes that are being run i feel like the mars arena is more disruptive than it's been in the past uh maybe it's just a little less prevalence the bkb a lot of projectile heroes that are going out like this wind ranger who gets screwed over so much by it but here i'm looking at even techies in this game right can't can't blast off into the arena as soon as you go through those walls you get poked so uh them Sonic, I, I feel like they're team fighting stronger. I feel like they're going to take the, the tempo better. I, I really like their draft quite a bit. Yeah, they can play S4 until Luna comes online. It's pretty much always the same item build. Mask of Madness, Power Treads into Manta style. Then either BKB or Shard, you can make a little bit of a switch up there. And uh, what a nice wraparound. They're going all the way into the enemy <laughs> triangle. Even wrapping around the Ancient Man. These guys want to make sure that they are on the high ground and do not get spotted on their way up. And uh, unfortunately for them, they smoked right past Versus uh -oh, Pro, who Sweet are holding their own high ground now. And Sweet and Strong is just going to walk right into them, giving Virtus Pro a free first blood. Oh, FNG gets it. I've also noticed a lot of... Not just Universal Heroes, but everybody is buying circlets. Like... For techies, mm -hmm. you can expect to have some circlet, but uh, yeah, let's check what Sky does at. Sweet and Strong, circlet. That has not been purchased before on some of these support heroes. Oh, Mars, you know, he will get a circlet and make Bracer out of it, but uh, everybody else also buying a circlet. It feels really nice. Like Sayush, another universal hero, double circlet, a lot of stats on him. Yeah, it just... Uh... <laughs> I've also noticed the the circlet meta. I call it the universal hero special when you like double circlet and then all branches, and then you've got the uh, the other build, you see the the full magic wand, and then some extra branches on top of that. Have, have you seen that build uh, as well? Yeah, that's what that's what I do. That's what I love to do on my universal heroes. It feels uh, very good, especially in the lane when you know there's going to be some spam going on. Mm-hmm. All right, let's take a look at our matchups here. We got the Luna Venge in the bottom lane up against the Wind Ranger Centaur. Uh, that's going to be a matchup that we're probably going to see a decent uh, amount of action. Mid lane matchup is going to be the Dragonite versus Ember Spirit, which we talked about that being a matchup that Dragonite can dominate, though maybe Chira Jr. is able to offset it with play. And then our top lane is going to be the uh, maybe a little bit weirder one, Faceless Void Techies as a combination. I'm not sure how well they're going to be able to fare up against Mars Skyrath Mage, which is probably one of the stronger offensive duos in this patch. Yeah, I think they can get some uh, return kills in this lane. Uh, I like Fist Void against Mars. Two reasons. You can always jump out of the arena and also like damage that he outputs you can time walk away, but not as much in the lane where you're playing against Skyrath Mage. I can also see Sweet and Strong getting Ancient Seal on level 2, just so that they can put more pressure onto Faceless Void. Mars uses full combo, Ancient Seal afterwards, damage has been done. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that sounds great because it's not like Arcane Bolt feels that good to use no. a lot of times when Concussive Shot is just better, right? Yeah, Arcane Bolt is uh, kind of a meh ability, unless you're playing some yeah. mid Skyrath Mage with the Bloodstone and shit, having that spell, uh, spell <laughs> lifesteal, 50% when it's maxed out. But uh, yeah, he decided to go for Arcane Bolt uh, on level 2. Maybe they want to opt to go for Techies instead. Yeah, FNG's definitely going to have to be real careful in this lane, that's for sure. This carriage time walks off a little bit of that damage. Our mid matchup looks like it's going very well for the Dragonite. 11 and 9. I feel like the, the early levels is where Dragonite uh, should always get furthest ahead. It should be getting a lot of denies in those first one or two levels before the Ember Spirit has higher levels of Sleight of Fist and does uh, a lot more damage and lower cooldown. And uh, he's certainly getting that. Boy, 14 and 10 now against 7 and 1. He has gotten himself a massive experience lead. Oh, absolutely. Oh, level four, he doesn't get stunned. I've seen this matchup. You want to have Dragon Tail in this matchup, but Squatix going for something different. Read Fire. Maybe he gets it on level five, because once you hit that level four, you have point in Dragon Tail stun. This is where you start to put even more pressure. You know, with two points in Dragon Blood, you're not going to die. Bracer or a double Bracer. And then with one stun, you deny like at least one creep, maybe even two. How do you feel about the... Uh, have you played Dragonite in this patch? 
Yeah, it feels good. With Mage Slayer Rush, yeah. Power Treads, uh, it feels so good. Like, overtime damage. With the, the Breathe Whew. Fire change, right? It's yeah. like kind of a small change, but being able to apply that Corrosive Breath uh, on Breathe Fire, it's just like a massive life change, right? You get like, you can actually initiate a little bit uh, farther away because you could Breathe Fire and it'll slow them down and you can actually catch heroes. Feels fantastic. Kirich is going to take a lot of damage, but he does manage to time walk off some of it. But there's that, what you were talking about, Ancient Seal picked up level three to uh, secure a little bit more damage on the Faceless Void when they go on him. With next Ancient Seal, they might be able to get the kill. He doesn't have any region left. Kiritic will be fed Healing Lotus, but that's about it. He has Healing Salve on FNG. Not that he wants to use it on him. We're not in Healing Salve meta. Thank God. That was one of the worst things to play Position 5. It's just like people spamming, oh, buy me Healing Salve. You had to buy yeah. five of them during the laning stage. I, uh, I I think that was one of the better changes that they did was uh, having the the healing salves, but uh, when you pass them over. But also the uh, I think just limiting uh, tangos in general. I there was definitely a point in a couple metas where laning phase just became way too consumable focused. You know, you just bought out as many consumables as possible to to win your lane. Just I like agree. accepting that <laughs> L. I that that always felt bad to me. Now you have to buy your own region, which feels nice. Mm -hmm. As a support, of course. Carries probably don't like it. Oh, noticed. Going in very deep. He might be in trouble here. Yeah, Ten magic wands. A lot of damage going to be thrown his way. He does have a Lotus, though. They're going to be able to get the kill on the Venge. And notice, actually, he's still going to stick around knowing that he has that extra bit of health from the healing Lotus. So... They actually do manage to get the kill, doesn't over quite overextend himself, and they pull the creep way back. Meanwhile, Kirich is going to finally be hunted down by the Mars and Skyrath Mage. It's a lot of burst damage, a lot of control stun into this long duration silence. The best silence in the game, pretty much, uh, the instant one. And then we've seen him play Skyrath Mage earlier today. Love that he's maxing it out. 1-1-3 one, one, build plus Mystic Flare. It maximizes your damage output. And also against these heroes like Faceless Void, Dragonite, who are tanky enough. What do you think about Orb of Corrosion as an item? Especially against the Dragonite, like reducing the healing and everything. I think it is an item that is matchup dependent more than anything. Uh, there's definitely... I, I initially thought I was going to be building it a lot more. And expensive. I, yeah, I found that it was just like actually too expensive. Uh, so it, I think in this sort of matchup, right against the Dragon Eye, I think it's it's great. I think it was a great pickup, but uh, definitely not the default pick like it used to be. Being chased down, respect gets the jump on his AU, but at the same time, he needs to be able to uh, meet up with his allies, and instead, he's just left on a one sided sandwich that uh, Virtus Pro just pushed back against, get that kill, and continue the pressure on this mid lane. Both teams were ready to back up their mid laners. Two supports made a rotation. Squadix, he's starting to put some pressure onto the tower. Does have double damage available. Plus that orb of corrosion, reducing the heal, overtime damage. Plus overtime damage coming out from Mage Slayer later on. Yeah, there, there is so many reasons why this matchup just does not feel great in the early game. And one of them being Ember Spirit's level six, he wants to just be able to keep farming. Uh, but if he chooses to ever leave lane, his tower is gone. If he stays in lane, his tower is still going to die just a little bit slower. He even had an amplifying damage rune ready to go, and he can't stop the Dragon Knight from hitting his tower, man. it's The, the matchup is just too damn rough. You're very quick at adjusting, calling it amplified damage rune already, huh? <laughs> you know, I like it. When I'm playing pubs, I actually will correct myself. Oh, jump in from the techies. Mars, going to be slowed down a little bit. Nice shackle shot. That's going to be a blanch and uh, pretty much guaranteed at this point, thanks to a bash from Kirich. So they get a kill on the cloud, relieving some of the pressure, even uh, if they can't stop what's going on mid lane right now. Amp damage for Chira Jr. Tries to go over the Dragonite. But he's so damn tanky, man. Goes for another power rune and does manage to grab it, despite uh, what the game is telling us. Does not actually get denied. And so now he has an illusion rune, which is much needed. It, all of these power runes against the Dragonite. Anything to stop this power spike he is. Yeah, this happens quite a lot recently. With people denying and picking up rune at the same time. But I've only seen it 
for active runes. I've never seen it for bounty runes. Actually, now that you say that, I'm, I, you're right. I'm not sure if I've noticed it for water runes either. Uh, maybe I have, but yeah, definitely not the bounty runes. Oh, Kiritich jumps away. He sensed something was off. They're gonna even bring respect to this top lane. Arena is available. Oh, I love the board that they put where Kiritich is farming right now. It gives them vision over these twin gate rotations. And also if they decide to go, like it might give him just a glimpse of vision and then he can time walk away. Usually it's where Radiant planes down a ward. So they just planted it first. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love placing, yeah, you're right. If I'm raiding on side, I love placing that ward just because it, it feels like that's the default uh, spot for the carry to go farm back when they're just like a little bit skittish. They don't want to go all the way back through the jungle, you know, past the tier two and stuff like that. But those two camps, they always love to be able to default to. So being able to have uh, that kind of vision for either side always kind of feels good and uh, gives them enough control that they feel confident that they can go through the gate and uh looks like they were trying to pressure the luna though uh monkushi's already farming his way back i guess that's the advantage of uh luna versus faceless void a lot more efficient jungling uh early on than what a faceless void can do vp they pretty much have to stack this top lane just to make sure that the faceless void doesn't get kicked out too early yeah, and also the ability to farm the stacks as Luna compared to Faceless Void early on is one of the reasons why you want to go for that push relatively early compared to Faceless Void and looking at Triangle for Clean Sonic. Yeah, there's a bunch of stacks already. Back into the game. Managed to get the silence off. Techies, oh, hit by the arena. Stops the blast off. They don't have quite enough control, though. Now they're going to be caught inside the Chronosphere. Unfortunately, it's during the Stampede, but they're still very awkwardly positioned on the side of Klim Simon. They're going to be able to run down two. And looks like all three. Ooh. No. Barely able to. Oh, he dies. Still the the in the end. <laughs> I thought it wasn't going to be enough damage. I thought surely his heal was going to be enough, but not quite. So they end up losing all three there. And at the same time, they lost their Ember Spirit. A massive blow to Klim Sonic. Yeah, this was supposed to be the time when they feel strong. They do have this plus 21 damage coming out from Lunar Blessing. The slides, they really hurt. They grouped up, but. Chrono onto four of them. Like, he didn't deal damage inside Chrono, but bought him just enough time for the rest of the team to connect. What happened to their burst damage on that faceless void? I... Well, what burst damage? Sky's level five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> well, I never noticed that if you click on the creeps, you can see who stacked it. I'm, I'm probably stupid. This is probably known for a really long time. But if you click on like these ancient creeps, it shows the icon of the guy who stacked it. Oh yeah, that is cool. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because the that's how the the bounty ends up getting pushed over to that hero is because the creep has like a, a debuff or something on it. Yeah, I never noticed that before. Interesting. Veil move for notice. Once again, the Centaur are going to go through the gate and see if they can make a move into their own safe lane. Works very well for them. Last time, this time around, they're going to be doing it without Chronosphere, but really just trying to ensure that this Faceless Void is able to continue laning here. They're going to meet up with Squanix here, smoke him up halfway through, see if they can wrap around behind the Mars, catch him again. Or actually go straight into the jungle where they can oh, find they Luna, the big who's one. farming up the stacks. Monkoshi gonna be run down by the Stampede. See if he gets out. Immediately stunned up. And the Venge. Well, I guess he wasn't level 6 anyway. So they're gonna take this stack away from the Luna. It was only farmed halfway through. They take Oof. the rest of the Ancients. Massive win for Virtus Pro. Win after win. They're now up 5k net worth before the 12-minute mark. Oh, that was juicy. They also got all the big creeps <laughs> they luna only killed the small ones from the with the glaze and now they're gonna <laughs> get another tower mage Slayer already online on dragonite this guy packs a punch i love that they're they playing always... around kiritich like just playing behind him smoke uh, they even picked up dragonite uh, while they were moving towards the stack and great timing like just great understanding of the game where luna is going to be farming and now so dps to the bottom lane 
Yeah, this and is looking so good for Virtus Pro. It always feels so good when you take the enemy offlane tower when they have a hero that takes advantage of ancient stacks, right? Because by taking that offlane tower, you have much better access to contesting both of those ancient camps there. And yeah. uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see Virtus Pro revisit that area in like a minute from now when Wisdom Rune is going to be spawning oh, up. Oh no, they not again. Move to bottom lane and catch the Luna again. Swamp back this time around. Respect is in the right spot. Monkoshi's actually well set up to get some Glaive damage in. Bouncing onto the Centaur into the Dragonite, who's now caught inside the arena. They're finally going to be able to get their mark and get two kills for Monkoshi and trying to chase the third one down for you, Sayuch. Chira Jr. Should be able to run him down, no problem with the slight chains. Kirich is actually going to show up here, immediately get silenced though and without anybody else around probably lacking the damage but finally Klimsonich they get something on the board here they only had a single kill but after that get another three more to themselves and cut that lead in half from Virtus Pro yeah good scan it feels like Virtus Pro they're too smart they're like okay Luna's not gonna be farming in the triangle so we're gonna smoke up they already Radiant planted the vision in this other ring so they saw a glimpse of her and they smoke up but the Radiant scan connected and it gave Klim Sonic just enough time to reconnect with the rest of their players they brought in every single member of the team uh-oh Sweden strong who's gonna tank it Respect's gonna go for it. The mines, one by one, protecting this Wisdom Rune Cloud. He's gonna just has, have to brave it. And FNG is gonna try and stomp them here with Notice hanging in the side here. They're gonna try oh, and go nice for the off of this one. Nice silence. Beautiful stuff from the uh, Skywrath Mage. Slight chains actually hitting on all three, almost pulling up Seyush. Not quite enough damage, though. He starts win running himself away. Gets chased down eventually, one for one trade. Chira Jr., though, looking at Virtus Pro, bit too tanky has to jump back out he's gonna maybe poke at them still see if the rest of his allies can come in but he's got to be careful the face's void is not far away in fact he's gonna jump down the cliff and hit him with the chronosphere to finish him off he knows that the swap is on cooldown lands a perfect chrono just on the edge or even the rest of the team was able to deal damage the first throw, they were so prepped for this 14 minute xp rune and they still have wisdom rune on their own side to be picked up I've seen a lot of centaurs, especially notice when he plays it. He doesn't tend to go greedy at all. Like, sure, Veil of Discord is fine. He wants to pick up face boots, but he does save up gold and goes for the blank dagger so that he can play with the team. Because Dragonite, with this new tech, he doesn't tend to pick up blink daggers straight away anymore. It's Mage Slayer into like Yasha or Blink. Sometimes you'll see a blink dagger in between, but yeah, that blink dagger is definitely delayed. Yeah, it's, uh, I've noticed that too, and it, it, I, I feel like it, it feels pretty nice, right? Like the Veil is just enough of a stat item, gives you uh, enough to be able to like farm up, have the HP regen, and then you get that Blink Dagger, it can be super active. Because I don't feel the best, even though Centaur can scale better than he has in so many patches in the past, pretty much any other patch. Uh, there's definitely something about this hero that I still feel like all of his impact is in that like 15 to 30 minute mark. Yeah, he has to be able to like get those initiations going, get Stampede to save some of the cores, maybe save himself. And also with the new Eternal Shroud, that's a great item for him where he feels unkillable. Like you want to be able to reset multiple times with the hero, Sayush. Okay, is the reward placed down? Ooh, Cloud, I would guess there, throws out the arena, seeing if he could catch the heroes rotating back, but uh, that's going to be a 90-second cooldown. Now, he doesn't have his Blink Dagger, not going to be there for quite some time, so maybe that's why he's feeling a little bit more loose with throwing out around his ultimate, but uh, they're going to need to hit their timing soon, man. It is, uh, it is not looking great when you're down 5k net worth against a Faceless Void. It's not just Faceless Void, it's also Dragonite going for this Manta style. This build is insane. They also don't have the heroes that deal well with it. There is no Lion, there is no Pugna with the Shard that can instantly kill those illusions. So if we're talking about sieging the Tier 3 Tower still being like the most difficult thing in Dota, once you have that Dragonite, once you have Faceless Void who can time walk most of the damage, Stampede if you run into trouble, they have very good sieging lineup. Stampede used to dissuade a little bit of aggression there from Klimsonich. 
as they back away this massive set of mines from fng chiro jr is going to start walking into some of them it takes a healthy amount of damage the flame guard protects him against a lot of it they'll pop a couple more of them fng's uh hard work doesn't really result in much there i know you're a techie spammer at least you were before <laughs> you know, the old I techies still, i am still <laughs> you still are okay well, for a good reason the hero feel is really good right now oh yeah i've noticed uh i know you play duo q with fogged all the time and uh, yeah. he, is, he has been on that techies train quite a bit lately yeah he he mastered it he's, like the level doesn't say he mastered it because he's like level 15 or something but the way he mm -hmm. plays it uh, yeah that that's why i feel the hero is so strong because i landed in in the past month for like 50 percent of my games pretty much <laughs> <laughs> dude it, it's just like it feels great to have this support right it like almost guarantee wins your lane great setup for a lot of kills and uh what i like what fng has done so far is the controlled the map really yes. well right uh, that's the biggest part area control where you want to take the fights and breaking smokes you see oh bomb has gone off we don't see anyone they must be smoke and most importantly controlling twin gates with it oh, oh, oh no noticed i think that was uh one of those accidental clicks on the twin gate maybe had a window there to be able to get a stun on a cheer junior before he go went through the gate but uh Lost opportunity, doesn't cost them much though. They know Klimsonic is on the other side of the map and FNG is placed very defensively while Squanix is gonna go and start hitting on these tier two towers. And with the Manta that he's got, the damage, it's gonna start building up, man. Oh, absolutely. Manta on both Dragonite and Faceless Void. So cheap way of dispelling Searing Chains. Most importantly, Ancient Seal, that's the big one. So you don't want to get bursted, you can use your other abilities. You'll still need a BKB on Faceless Void, but uh, yeah, you also become tanky. Manta style, I would say, doesn't feel as great, just the build up. We're like, oh, I'm close to it. But then again, you're like, oh, it's 15.50 for a recipe. That's a very expensive recipe. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad they made it a little bit more uh, heavy on the recipe just because Manta is such a good farming item for certain heroes. I feel like it should feel bad, right? I think before it felt way too stat efficient, the the gold uh, to stat buildup. But now, you know, like it's, it's actually a hefty cost for you to be able to get this item yeah. that usually is like... For the heroes that get it, it's usually really powerful. Yeah, necessary change for sure. Uh, same goes for E-Blade. You're like, oh, I'm also close to it, but the recipe is massive. And if you're buying, yeah. I don't know, I feel it, like buying Refresher, buying Heart feels very awkward. It's like you're not getting anything. You need to have enough money to buy it, plus probably buy back at that point. Manta style, Kiritich, he's in. Almost getting bursted down there, but that Manta style timing it's gonna be tough for Klimsonic now. I don't know how you're gonna be able to catch this Faceless Void with a Manta against all of these. Like, <laughs> every single one of their lockdown spells is gonna be dealt with by a Manta, right? Yeah, double Manta, massive issue. Vengeful Spirit, something about this hero having this insane shield plus let's say you have a bubble on a hero plus swap plus pavis or solar crest you're, you're like oh i'm dying but you're actually fine you have extra almost thousand hp and you did mention luna with the shard so having that damage reduction 25 percent <laughs> let's see swap needs to here be comes used probably here there it is Stampede still trying to chase him down here, but once again, Monkushi just going to turn around. They actually have the arena on the side that caught the tankies as well. Immediately bursting down too, and now running in for more. Though Kiro is going to be able to hit the uh, Chronosphere here. No more swaps to be able to bail out this Luna, but it's not enough burst damage either. He couldn't finish him off. Now has to jump backwards. Jira Jr. is going to be a little bit low here. Do manage to get stun and blow him up. Faces void. Got too aggressive there, missing out on some of his damage dealers, and as a result, failed to burst down the Luna. The fight goes sideways, and Virtus Pro lose much of their gold lead. Yeah, what well, we just mentioned, you know, going for a hero, tanky as Luna, she gets the Moonglaze uh, off, 25% reduction, gets swapped in, and the rest of the team was there. Dragonite was 
didn't really participate in that fight. Uh, you know, he was in a melee form, so doesn't deal as much damage. The good thing is the Breathe Fire still, you know, even in melee form applies the Corrosive Breath, but it's not enough. Like, especially when you have Chrono lay down on a hero, on a tanky hero like Luna, you want to be able to burst her down. And this opens up the map for Clean Sonic. They know that there is no Chronosphere. There's still Tier 1 Tower available for Burst Bro to TP2, and Scan connects. It's already down to half HP. Rotation just going to be too slow from Virtus Pro to get there in time. They can get close and oh, actually, they're going to back out on the side of Klimsonich, taking a safer route, backing up, smoking, and see if they can get the jump on Virtus Pro. Kiritic doesn't want to come into this fight. He's farming. He wants to pick up the XP rune first. Some good observer ward, mines. Roshan, they scouted him out, sitting at. Sub 50% HP. They're going to go for it, breaking the smoke on Squadix, who's in the trees right now. Immediately pops out and actually hits the stun on a cheer Jr. Throw the magic damage at him. That's not going to do much. Beautiful stomp, though. Arena comes through, try and stop the centaur who disrupted the back line. Almost popped the supports. Finally does get one of them. Say you power shots him down. Now they look to Cloud. Kiritich shows up and cleans up the fight successfully this time around. Cheer Jr. Got to be careful. Shackle shot. Not going to latch here. Has Last a right. jump. Kiritich can chase him down. He's got a time dilation coming up soon. He's going to slow down the Ember Spirit. Media lit silence. Sweetum Strong so good on the responses here. It's going to cost him his life, but he does bail out his Ember Spirit. At least in that moment, Kiritich did manage to run him down in the end, though. Virtus Pro striking back in a big way without the Chronosphere winning a fight like that. Well, now they're going to be able to take Roshan as well. Yeah, this Roshan definitely belongs to them. Nice fight overall. They didn't use any buybacks, still have a tier 1 tower, so with TP rotations they could potentially bring in numbers. But uh, yeah, I don't see Clean Sonic defending this Rosh. Not sure how they didn't have enough damage. Like, if you look at their lineup, you would expect them to kill Roshan pretty quickly. With yeah. Solar Crest, uh, also Vlad's on Mars, and Luna Aura. But uh, they were unable to do it, and uh, nice read from Virtus Pro. Getting it there in time. Yeah, especially considering the fact, like, Chronosphere was down, right? I feel like yeah. that's the biggest threat for Klimsonich around the Roshan pit. So I would have expected them just to be able to commit, right? Just be like, guys, we have Arena. They come try and fight us inside the Arena without Chronosphere. You know, it's going to be a hard fight for them. Instead, trying to initiate on Virgis Pro actually played against them because they ran into the Dragonite, which is the one hero you do not want to be touching. He also had Manta style available on Dragonite and going for a safer route. Still wants to have a BKB, wants to have another way of just running out of the arena, dealing the damage, a lot of stuns, something that can disrupt them. So wants to have free reign and they're getting closer to level 18. So there's going to be a lot of slow coming out from him. Some sticky bombs, uh, time dilation as well, which is maxed out. There's a time where Faceless Void prefers to pick up just one point in it and go for stats, but since he picked up Ment style and does have specialist array, that's a lot of stats. So he can put more points into time dilation. Mm. The uh, I, I feel like if you're a Klimsonich, you've missed your window. I think level 18 Dragonite uh, against any of these like uh, range physical damage dealers, Luna especially, you're you're just gonna get kited around a bit it's gonna be a hard go when just like these mantas just show up hit you with this massive slow on a team that's already pretty mobile right you've got faceless void wind ranger techies can't really touch him stampede potentially and then the dragonite's too tanky the right kind of setup for virtus pro the luna is gonna struggle to be able to stick on top of heroes and and put the good damage down yeah it feels like they needed this aegis on their side luna Pretty similar to, I would say, Ursa lineups where you're relying on this Aegis to apply pressure, kill tier 2 towers, and maybe go for the high ground. So this hurts Luna quite a lot. Kushi, even though he's having a good time, 4, 1, and 3 only died that uh, one time when they managed to sneak into their triangle. Has a lot of farm, the most farm hero in the game. He still dies. Like, even with the BKB, 9 second BKB, it's, it's going to be very burstable. Uh, Swap needs to be close. You know, pop that swap, Solar Crest, so he gets the glaives off. 
and have Speaking that damage of that, reduction. Uh-oh. TP coming in, but Kiritich is well positioned to be able to hit a Chronosphere on both of them if he wanted to, opted not to. The TP didn't go through. Now they're going to try and chase down Lone Koshi after that, knowing that there's no swap to be able to stop it. The damage is guaranteed. They'll bring down the carry and now turn their attention into the Tier 2. Beautiful play from Kiritich. First, he fake pumps Chronosphere to see if he's going to use a BKB, doesn't flinch, and then gives enough time for Squatix to jump in, get the stun. Plus, also puts a Chrono just in case Vengeful Spirit TP to Tier 3 Tower, blocks the path so that he can't get the swap off. And now, banging on the Tier 3. You talked about <laughs> at the start of the game, the Lunas so often getting the push into the enemy high ground, but just failing to be able to, to finish it off. Well, they didn't even get close at this game. Virtus Pro, they're going to be the ones pushing the high ground first. Nice wow. swap back, though, into the spear. Great combination, and uh, they're going to look for more. With the arena catching these heroes, sadly, no damage dealer behind it. They had the burst to be able to kill one hero, but need the Luna for the sustained damage. Virtus Pro going to stick around now. Finishing up the Rage Barracks and see if they actually stick around for the Melee Barracks because Luna is coming up three seconds time. Tries to go for the Spear back. Does manage to land it. Kiritich is going to be able to time walk backwards. So beautiful Shackle Shot lashing down Chiro Jr. But now Monkushi is back into it with the Eclipse running down the Centaur. Cleans up the Tankies as well. Virtus Pro overstaying their welcome just a tad bit there. Losing a oh, two Oh, can they one get trade. another one? Woo! Kiritich ooh, Long gets the TP away. Cloud just a little bit too late to that one. Yeah, you can see the power of Luna. As soon as she gets out, the uh, damage has been done. Everybody they help. couldn't finish off the Bailey Barracks, but yeah, as Luna shows up in a fight. Level 3 Eclipse on top of them. And for the next fight, he will have Butterfly. Respect. Two points in Vengeance Aura. You want to have that maxed out to provide Luna with even more damage. She's sitting next to Mars, who has Vlad's. So that's quite a lot. Those bounces start to hit heroes, and they need to fall back. They also used a BKB on Dragonite, so they did not have it. Kiritich will have one for the next fight. So nine second BKB, and they can go for a potential push. Try to siege a tier two tower, maybe get a kill. Respect needs to follow. Munkushi, I feel like he he just needs to get that swap off because one target they want to go for is kill this Luna. If there's no Luna, there's not enough damage. Yeah, 100%. Butterfly now done means it's going to be a little bit harder to push damage onto this Luna. Also, a very big damage upgrade. Especially, uh, I actually just now noticed you got the Vindicator's Axe. And one time you're going to see the uh, the use of the uh, the damage aspect when silenced with the Mask Madness, so she actually pumps out crazy amounts of damage a lot of when you speed. use that. Yeah. I miss Flutter. Flutter on Butterfly. Like, just give it some active. Mm. That's cool. I don't... I, you, I'm you trying you to think don't. if I do <laughs> miss that or not. I'm not sure if I do, because didn't that allow people to be able to just get rid of their boots? And I'm not sure... I'm trying to think whether I like that aspect or not, you know? Yeah, probably, like, it would be OP since, like, you buy Butterfly. Now Disperser is a great substitution yeah, yeah. for no boots. Maybe you get uh, something as a Tier 4 item, Force Boots as a Tier 5 item, Ninja Gear. Uh, still, even though you can't put it in the backpack, one of the strongest Tier 4 items. Well, you're not going through gates if you're uh, Glimsonich anytime soon. FNG has completely mined that up in an attempt to be able to control the pits for Roshan. They smoke on through and they're going to run into Sweden Strong here. and They'll collect that kill pretty easily. A bit too deep. Not sure what he's doing there. Unless he wants to break the smoke, which is fine. But other than that, he has no business on that side of the map. How do you feel about uh, Mars scaling into the late game at this point? It's the one sticking point for me in, in just like how much do I like Mars right now is where does he go after this initial blink dagger, you know, BKB, whatever. Like what is his late game item that really feels good? Yeah. Because Refresher is just out, right? You can't build that item no. on him. No, that, that's not, why. I... Not for like the third or fourth item, right? Yeah. I... 
I feel like, because you want to buy Hex, you want to buy Shard, and you want to buy Refresher. And these items, like, you don't get anything from the components. Like, it's not like he needs intelligence. It's not like he needs mana regeneration from Tiara of Selimene. So it feels like you need to have 6,000 gold. Imagine you having, I don't know, Deso. You're getting those stacks, you're pumping in damage, and then you start to scale. I, I just don't like Mars as a hero right now. I feel like they're much better off laner swap in. Oh, they went for the swap back to try and chain the stun now at least they get the bkb out of, out of uh Kiritich, but it was supposed to be a pickoff uh sadly they they only brought the three heroes there maybe they would have had even if they hit that uh magic missile i question whether or not they had enough damage uh in part because the skyrath mage got picked off and failing to hit that means that you may be giving up on roshan here as you can see virtus pro already set up with a mine in the pit it is going to be a later roshan though so clemson inch do have some time to be able to uh get their eclipse back online yeah, bkb will reset on faceless void so virtus pro they should be pretty happy about it and fng he's been pretty busy planting those mines it's so difficult to approach it like you if you're using a smoke let's see if they can pick him off or at least try to pick him off one more time through the triangle they go kiritich already back over to the ancient okay. so this is where that offlane tower still being up really hurts you you can't actually go to the other ancient camp very easily <laughs> Mine. They, they, they just blew up one mine. Okay, smoke. <laughs> they know exactly where they are. Time to farm up. Wait for Roche and Radiant side. As you said, it's going to be a longer one. Minute. So they still have like 50 seconds to bring him down. This is one of those awkward timings where you want to stick around the pit. But the opposing team who doesn't have control of the pit is like, well, screw it. Let's just hit high ground. They're in the Roshan pit probably right now anyway. Maybe they're doing Roshan. Let's just try and take a lane of barracks for it. And the longer that Roshan takes, the more damage that Klimsonich is getting. Jump for it from Squadic. Surrounded by heroes, but he's a big, big boy, man. That is a golden black dragon. You're not going to so easily bring him down. As you can see, only half the BKB. Monkushi now forced to use his BKB. Eclipse goes out as well. Kirich down to half health. Time walks off half bit. Uh -oh. He still has the Chronosphere ready to go. He still has the Chronosphere. He's going to throw Whoa, it down. Whoa, What was that? He just Chronosphered his own team <laughs> an actor in the midst is he just screws over his team and it may be not enough squadix is still too strong as he brings down almost the luna not quite enough damage how is he still alive finally the centaur gets him in the end but virtus pro will lose the fight despite killing the luna all because their carry has gone rogue <laughs> agent faceless <laughs> void i mean <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting for a long time, time walk, and then started to receive damage from Luna. The Glaze uh, Eclipse as well, and they're gonna, they're gonna push. The worst thing is, like, he dodged everything, and then Sweeting Strong still managed to get them with Arcane Bolt. And, uh, yeah, big, big loss. You said it correctly. Lim Sonic, they don't want to take down. If, they're, if the enemy team is waiting for Roche, they're gonna go in and uh, try to force something. They have more than enough damage with Luna, all these Aura, Vlad's Vengeance Aura, and... Yeah, now they have advantage in terms of barracks, because last time, Virtus Pro, they were unable to finish off the melee barracks. <laughs> what, okay. a, what a clear moment of panic that was. He what? time walked off. He was a half help. Time walked off all of that damage, had Chronosphere the entire time. <laughs> Start, clearly starts panicking and Chrono spheres his own team. Like, that was insane. All right, Cro Chrono used guys. You you do the rest. Uh, figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had a beat where I I thought to myself, "Is Faceless Void on the Radiant team?" <laughs> <laughs> Six versus four. Unlucky. Respect. Gonna be run down as he tries to approach the pit here. Virtus Pro set up. Oh, tried to go for the initiation onto Kiritich, but he already got up the BKB before the scythe came into play, and he doesn't get that chain stun. They do manage to hit him with the shackle shot. Looks like Cloud. He managed to get off the spear off just at the end of time and does blow up the faceless void, giving his life for it. Now the Luna's just gonna chase down these heroes. Look and notice getting cleaned up by Monkoshi. Squadix is gonna try and challenge him just like he did last time, and he's doing a decent go of it just like last time, but it's not quite it's enough. It's not damage. enough. He needs a carry, man. He needs a carry. Well, maybe he doesn't need his carry to chrono him. They're doing a good job right now. 
Uh, problem is, they don't have any true strike. I saw Faces Void, his quick buy was Butterfly. Not sure what that was. I, like, you, you're playing into Luna. You want to kill Luna instead of protect yourself against Luna. Scott is a great choice, don't get me wrong. But I feel like MKB is a must here. You, like, you just yeah. don't dish enough damage. They need to figure out who jumps Vengeful Spirit, some kind of a silence, uh, push her out so that she can get the swap. And with level 20 talent plus MKB, Faceless Void should be able to bring you down from 100 to 0. You're sitting at uh, only 2,000 HP. Like, you don't have Satanic yet, you're not tanky enough to sustain through all that burst. FNG. Is he going to get the timing right here? Is he going to blast off in the pit? Oh god, if he goes now, he might get it. A little bit too late. And he reconsiders his actions here. I'll slip on out of there. But uh, yeah, Klimsonich turning around the game after two successful fights. We'll get the Aegis into their hands and uh, cheese to go. <laughs> you asked me how did the games look in Eastern Europe. <laughs> I think I described it perfectly. This is it. Back and forth. It feels like Virtus Pro, they are winning a 6k gold lead throughout the majority of the game. And suddenly they lose it twice. Like they <laughs> take one bad fight, one good fight. It's time for Virtus Pro to take a good fight again. Yeah, what, what happened like 10 minutes ago when Virtus Pro was pushing high ground uh, very confidently, you know? <laughs> what, ha what happened in that game? Yeah, it feels like most of the games that I covered in these qualifiers, whoever is pushing for high ground early loses. <laughs> or the, well, something the, to, uh... the other option is to win, but you need another like 30 or 40 minutes. So let's right, see. Right, right, yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of that evasion problem you were talking about, we got Aviana's Feather now on the Luna as well. Well, so... if, if this is going to be Scotty on Faceless Void, I'm going to lose it. it. It has to be MKB. <laughs> Somebody ping Aviana's Feather. What's his uh, evasion at the moment? Let's check. Evasion says 51%. So yeah, half of your attacks are misses. Some Mjolnir procs, of course, but uh, okay, he swaps. He sees it. Angonim Scepter now done for uh, Chira Jr. as well, who's been uh, quietly sneaking up the ranks there in that worth. Obviously, he's never had that great of a game starting from the beginning against that Dragonite, but uh, he's been having a bit of a presence now, and now that he's got Angonim Scepter, he can... Uh, well, we'll see what he does with it exactly. I was going to say hit the back line, but uh, one hero is Techies, the other is Wind Ranger, who yeah. I feel like FNG, I'm not even sure if he's in these fights most of the time. I feel like <laughs> FNG is just, a, he's just setting up mines. That's all he's doing. He's been busy, yeah. Like the back, jumping the back line for Virtus Pro really is not as important. Oh, there yeah. it is. We just cursed him. FNG, the front line, setting up some mines. Does have BKB, sorry, buyback available. And this is a dangerous time to hear Aegis and Satani. You've got three lives on this Luna when you've struggled to be able to bring her down once. Hitting your high ground, this could be a sweep that takes Megas. Five back coming out. Stun down to half HP. Still BKB Satanic available. Full HP again. You Jira can't Jr. hit. Just having a poke to make sure that Luna does successfully get back out. Looks like they're going to go back and take Tormentor for now, while uh, Virtus Pro are actually going to smoke out. But what is this smoke for exactly? Maybe it's going to be the fake one. It seems like they want to go back in. Pretending. I think Kirtic just maybe made the call that it's impossible to win a fight unless he has MKB after they smoked. I mean, he's always like, guys. Like, we can't do this. Like, yeah, he, give them Elena Barracks. Yeah. Dragonite also going there. for Bloodthorn. That's a very expensive item. This item costs almost 7,000 gold. So he swaps things around. He also wants MKB. Can't really blame him. Double damage on Kiritich or amplified damage on Kiritich. Well, TP to the base immediately. <laughs> do they have any smokes left? He does have a self smoke from Ninja Gear. You know, they could have left it double damage. All the voice lines say double damage. But, you, you know, they knew that if they left it double damage, there would have been that Reddit post, you know? 75% <laughs> damage. Still in beta, by the way. Please fix Valve. <laughs> yeah, subscribe to Dota Plus for three ninety nine so that you have correct description of a rune. Let's see. 
Ooh, there's a lot of gold on Sweet and Strong right now. I mean, Philly did help a lot, but he can buy out on the Aghanim Scepter, but he can also oh, wow. save up. I think having buyback at the moment is his priority. Dude, playing Skywrath Mage at this point, when, when you get to this kind of late game, oh my god, it feels so good, right? You've got the shard that has been given to you for free and you now actually have an Aghanim Scepter, so the amount of spells that you're spamming around, you become a tanky beast of, of, a, of a hero while also outputting crazy amounts of damage. Yeah, it's, he also has these two gap closing items, Blink and Force Staff, so he can get out of the trouble and does have Ninja Gear, so he can keep the distance. How many Ninja Gears do we have this time? Yeah, a lot I of saw... them. One on Dragonite, one on Faceless Void. So yeah, only four. Four in total, yeah. The cavalry has arrived. <laughs> well, Clemsonage, they definitely could have been a little bit more decisive. I agree. In their push, but they're they're playing it careful, and sometimes that's the right play, sometimes the wrong play. We'll see what happens, but in this situation, it has given Kiritich the opportunity to complete its MKB. So they have an answer to that Luna, at least the evasion. We'll see whether or not they have an answer to the other parts of it, right? Which is the swap and the damage reduction from the shard. I think they missed their timing a bit. This game is still winnable for Klimsonic, don't get me wrong. But yeah, allowing them to farm two Monkey King bars when you have Aviana's Feather and Butterfly, it is time to strike. They had Aegis, they had Satanic, Butterfly. Very difficult to go through all this. But it seems like they're gonna be waiting maybe for the next Roche, which could respawn in two minutes, going through the gates right now. No mines in that area. Level 25s are around the corner. And uh, Luna is the closest one. So that Eclipse Lucent Beam Mini Stun is the one that I've usually seen. I've, I've seen them picking up the other one because I've seen, as I said, oh, like really? 12, 12 Lunas in the last few days. Uh, they go for Lunar <laughs> Blessing damage. Uh, I guess it's just, yeah, we want to dish out as much as we can. I do I like the other one. That one talent. made more sense in, in how these Lunas play. Uh,. uh so I always thought to myself, like, why don't they do that? Like, you're just right-clicking most of the team fights anyway. Yeah, because if he goes for Eclipse, Lucent, Mini Stun, it goes through BKB, her ulti. Maybe that's the big one. So the damage, like, spreads around. They have two carries who have Manta style. So a lot of that damage will be around those illusions anyway. So I don't... Or he needs to wait. If he wants that, like, they need to clear the illusions, wait until the BKBs are down then you'll see the power of it. But yeah, level 25 talent, that is insanely good. Oh, we actually have a level 20 for the Wind Ranger now, which takes away the uh, little bit more of that damage reduction on Focus Fire. Not that he has a whole lot of damage in the first place, and that maybe is a, a little bit where Virtus Pro is lacking is the scaling on their supports. I mean, we already talked about how the FNG has just been kind of chilling out, throwing mines everywhere. He's got a Solar Crest, Vlad's, but uh, Seyush is the one who hasn't managed to scale at all in yeah, this game. He's having a good game. He's like involved in 19 out of 23 kills and everything, but uh, Tanky is just that, like, where's the damage? Imagine a fight where Luna's sitting at 30% HP, you have Maelstrom plus maybe a BKB, and then you show up in a fight with Windrun, she can't touch you, doesn't have MKB of her own, and you get a kill because of the focus fire. But this, yeah. like, because he's playing a different type of a game. He's playing more of a Gale Force, sustainability from Glimmer Cape, and this Guardian Greaves. Hex as the next item, that's the big one. It's just, yeah, it, it's going to take you another 10 minutes to get there plus fly back. Yeah, it always, I, I feel like it's a little bit awkward Wind Ranger going for this kind of build when you already have techies uh, who, you know, typically is building those kind of utility items, right? He's just like a lot of times you see a lot of greaves, you see a lot of pipes, a lot of solar crests on this hero. He just kind of like tanks himself up because, you know, that part of his magic resistance, part of it is just the, the way you kind of get gold naturally. But jump in from the high ground, noticed. 
Already on notice at half HP while the Faceless Void gets blown up. They get the initiation from Cloud this time. Successfully gets the Blink Scythe onto the Faceless Void before his BKB. And that may just be the end of the game. Lacoste, we've got a push potentially coming in. They are going to go back and do Roshan. If they push for high ground, they would have found that the Faceless Void did not have buyback. Yeah, it's uh, hard to have a read whether he does or doesn't because he's like... 75 gold short, and Sayush will pick up oh. Bounty Rune in the bottom, and he does have a buyback, but uh, yeah, this is a much safer play for them. Going for Roche, it's also Agadem Scepter, so who's gonna pick it up? Maybe they give it to Venge. Venge has something on the career. Oh, he just picked up Ags of his own, so he doesn't need to have it. They could give it to Luna. It's pretty good. Yeah. Now he wishes he had the other talent, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Big boost. 42 thousand net worth next closest is twenty seven thousand for the dragonite i'm still like why does lunar blessing say damage increase by 82 when it's not <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah someone doubled the number for some reason up to high ground they go and 15 seconds on the faceless void but i feel like that's gonna be too long they're gonna lose to megas here but it seemed okay. They still have Glyph, so maybe they have a chance to be able to hold one of these buildings up. Long and it's gonna be five really close seconds. Call. He's gonna be coming back up, and the buildings are gonna be dead before he even arrives off his TP scroll. Potentially, Squadix. He's gonna have to get in there. Monkushi's gonna finish it off. Otherwise, they start making their jump. They, okay, already out to half health. Managed to get the swap back though. Respect. Gonna be left to potentially die here and come back. After all, he does have that Aghanim Scepter. Don't want to commit as a result, trying to push him back in, see if they can get this kill from the high ground without committing too much, and they do. So respect finally going down. Not much of a loss, though, from Klimsonich. As long as they keep this ghost still alive, they've got another swap to be able to bail out Monkushi, who now He's charges in. forward, goes for it, and immediately just gets kited around. The Stampede trying to get away from this Luna during the BKB timing. Now that it's gone, they can stun him up. Swap back once again while the Arena initiation goes out. Does manage to get a nice set of spears, but running into all those mines, he gets blown up in the process. Yeah. He still does have Chrono available. Yeah. Let's see if they want to chase now, get something else done. I've seen this so Ooh, many noticed. times. Like, I told you, Blue Actually, Luna. Pushing the high ground to try to finish off the barracks. They get the stun. She's unable to do it, but the, the big creeps inside their base deal some damage to tier four towers. <laughs> so it was foretold. So it is so. The Luna, Blue Luna, fails to push the high ground yeah. yet again. Has 11,000 net worth in the bank right now. Girl, spend some of that. Let's go. He's uh, fully jacked. He might buy a moon shard. We can call her Bluna, considering that he is always blue. Uh, what is he getting rid of? Yeah, that's the problem. Like Luna comes online so quickly, being six slotted, that uh, like you need to get rid of some of the items. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be a refresher. Either. Okay. Recipe has been purchased. I can't believe, man, that the. When they lost that fight, I was like, <laughs> oh, surely that's Megas. Even when they went back and did Roshan, I was like, they're still going to get there in time, man. That, that melee barracks down to half health. Couldn't finish it off with a Luna. And now, Klimsonich. <laughs> I don't know. There's the two <laughs> minutes left on the Aegis to go for high ground. This is scripted. I've seen it so many times. It's so funny. <laughs> Me and Gareth were having so much fun with it. Uh, are you entertained by Mars items right now? This is it. Like yeah, this is where you are. feel strong, huh? Even then, dude, it's so <laughs> mana intensive. To, you can't actually get off a full double combo. You can double double arena uh, potentially with double spear. You can maybe do all that plus a scythe or a second scythe. He's got cheese, so it. This com this this situation, he can't actually get the full combination off. But man, it just it just feels like it's not enough. You just don't have enough of mana pool most of the time. So refresher 350, sight of vice 250. That's 600, 850, two arenas 500. Yeah, you you don't have enough. You just don't have like you need some Scotty. Oh, she goes in again. Monkoshi 
Pop of the Satanic, nothing to really hit there, so that's going to be a bit of a wasted one. Lion. Though. It doesn't matter Lion with again. the Aegis commits BKB. They don't want to go for the Luna when the Aegis is just about to expire, but now they push out, seeing if they can catch some heroes on their way back. And Squanix does manage to get the stun. The Arena follow up. Beautiful Scythe countering the faces. Void and Cloud gets him again. He's destroying Kiritich at this point in time. Pushing forward though. Respect getting some of these heroes out and stunning them. Chira Jr. pushing forward with that slight. Shiva slowing everybody down. Chad had a hard time getting out. Finally, they lose that Aegis though. The Luna was about to time out just on time there, but they finally finished it off. That again. Once again, Cloud locks down the faces. Void. Cloud has been an absolute menace for the carry of Virtus Pro. Has locked him down in these last fights and has won Clemsonich. Game one. Oof, claim Sonic. You give them Vengeful Spirit plus Luna. You have Chira Jr. playing Ember Spirit. This guy knows how to recover. Again, he's playing into matchup that's not favored for him and still manages. He's been like pretty silent because he didn't have the game.